Welcome to Revamped, the number one amputee podcast hosted by an amputee and brought to you by De La Torre Orthotics and Prosthetics in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm Brian Mosier, the social media advisor for De La Torre, and I also happen to be a left below knee amputee. Let's get into today's episode. De La Torre Orthotics and Prosthetics invites all women to our second annual Women's Amputee Event on Saturday, October 21st from noon until 4 p.m. at Chatham University Eastside, located at 6585 Penn Avenue in Pittsburgh. This free event will explore mobility milestones and feature Chatham physical therapists teaming up with De La Torre prosthetists to work in a fun environment with each amputee on learning to achieve mobility milestones. All attendees will receive a free t-shirt in their choice of size and color. To RSVP, call 412-599-1105, and please remember to include your shirt size and color choice when you call. Speaking of t-shirts, the official revamped podcast t-shirt is now available on our website, www.revampedpodcast.com. These 100% cotton t-shirts are available in size small through 3X and come in blue, purple, red, green, and black. Each shirt is $15, and from now through the end of September, 50% of the proceeds from each shirt ordered will go to support Camp No Limits, who provide camps for children with limb loss, as well as education, mentorship, and support to these children and their families. For more information about Camp No Limits, visit www.nolimitsfoundation.org. We also offer a pink breast cancer awareness revamped t-shirt with 50% of all proceeds going to support a glimmer of hope, a Pittsburgh-based breast cancer foundation offering services and support to breast cancer patients and their loved ones. For more information about A Glimmer of Hope, visit www.symbolofthecure.com. And now, here's today's episode. Hey, how's it going, everyone? My guest today is proof positive that you should never judge a book by its cover. She's a relatively new amputee, a wife, mother, and an avid lifted truck lover. Christy Wimberly. Hi, thank you. So right out of the gate, I want to say how very impressed I am with you. When I first started following you on Instagram, uh, I saw this beautiful woman who loved big trucks. And my first thought was, this chick's a real badass. And after we became friends on Facebook and I started reading your website, I'm, I'm truly in awe at how far you've come and your attitude towards everything you have dealt with and overcome. And I've got to ask before we get too far into your story, when did you first develop a love for big trucks? Um, I don't know. I guess I've always liked like vehicles and um, gas cars and stuff. But uh, I guess within the past year or so, I really started getting into like lifted trucks because um, my husband has a lifted truck. So that's kind of where it came from. And then he got me into it and it just kind of grew from there. So I've I've seen some of the pictures that you've had on social media. Tell me about tell me about a little bit about your truck. What kind of truck do you have, and what kind of mods have you done to it? So I have a Ford F one fifty Sport. Um, it's a two thousand sixteen. I haven't done anything just yet. Um, it's actually being built for the SEMA show in Las Vegas this year, um, which is like a huge specialty aftermarket automotive trade show um, right. for like three. Yeah. So um, it's going to have a 10 inch lift kit, a pro charger, um, long tube headers, exhaust, um, big wheels, big tires. I don't know. It's just like a big, fast lifted truck. Nice. Very nice. I, uh, I'm, I'm into that sort of thing. So I said, hey, I've got you. I, I need to ask because I think that's really cool. So typically, whenever I talk to someone, if I always begin by asking them how they became an amputee, your story, however, is much more than you just losing a limb. Take us back. What were you, five years old when you received a diagnosis that would change the course of your life forever? Yeah, so I was five. Um, I actually started when I was three. I had really severe back pain, and um, my parents kept taking me to the doctor because I couldn't sleep through the night. 
especially when I was like laying flat on my back. Um, and I was misdiagnosed with night terror. So then they finally did an MRI like a year or two later. Um, cause it just kept getting worse and worse. Um, and then they found a benign spinal cord astrocytoma inside my spinal cord, which is basically just a tumor that it wasn't cancerous. Um, but the location of it and how it kept growing back, um, it caused a lot of nerve damage, a lot of growth issues with my right leg, um, just a whole lot of problems. So when they found the tumor, it was about the size of a golf ball. And the location of it, they just had, kept having to cut into my spinal cord. Um, so every time they cut into it, everything just kept getting worse and worse for me mobility-wise and also with my growth. So it's done in my growth and I have radiation treatment. And I've had like a total of, now I've had 20 surgeries um, to correct my leg and to get rid of the tumor. I was reading on your website about some of the uh, the things that they had to do to try to correct your problem. Did you did you end up with with rods and, and spinal fusion at all? Yeah. So the and they don't know. My my doctors don't know if it was from the radiation or if it was from the tumor, or a combination of both. But all those things together, my um, vertebrae got really soft and. I had severe scoliosis within a year to where um, if they wouldn't have fused my spine and then put in the rods, I was, at the time I was in excruciating pain um, and they tried to correct it with a brace, but had they not have done that, it just would have gotten significantly worse. So they did that and I haven't been in pain at all since then. I don't have any back problems. Wow. Very nice. So you're, you're diagnosed with this and you're young. And so you're growing up, basically growing up with a, with a disability. What was it like for you as a kid uh, living with what others did perceive as a disability? Were your peers and friends accepting or, or, or was it worse for you? Were you bullied and made fun of on that spectrum? Uh, I mean, I had a small group of friends, but I kind of always didn't really fit in. Um, pretty much my whole life, I've never really fit in because I am so different. Um, kids are really, really mean, especially in middle school and high school. Um, and I did get made fun of a lot, but I think that kind of helped me be who I am today. Cause without that, um, I wouldn't have such a positive outlook and like kind of like a badass attitude if I didn't have people who, um, did that stuff for me. So I do feel like it made me a better person. So how have you learned to handle the negativity from others regarding your disability? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, most of the time when people like say stupid comments or uh, make fun of me or whatever, I just like, it's happened to me so much that I just kind of laugh about it and roll my eyes. Um, Cause there's always going to be haters out there. And it's, it's all about how you react to those comments and um, people are hating on you because if you don't care and you laugh about it and you can move on from it, then you've obviously won. Like, it's not a big deal because you're, no matter what, I'm always going to get comments like that. Um, so it's really how I choose to react to it. Absolutely. You're right. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's terrific advice. So throughout your journey, have you had times where you struggle with body image issues because of your disability? And if so, how did you overcome that? Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, my whole life, you, you go, like, to the swimming pool and you're different. And, like, you have this leg that's, like, smaller and ugly and shorter. And um, I, I'm i not as able or wasn't as able to be as physically active. So I couldn't work out or do all these things. Um, so I kind of, like, hit it a lot, too, like, because I wasn't very – okay in my skin and like um ashamed of like how people looked at me I wore pants for the past oh gosh like 20 years um okay. just because I was ashamed of like my leg brace and the stairs and the comments and stuff but um I kind of flipped my thinking within the past year or so because I don't know what happened it's one day I'm just like I'm so sick of like being embarrassed by it that I'm just going to put it all out there. And I think like with the truck build kind of that also helped me 
put it out there like, hey, I'm going to wear shorts and I'm going to show people that even though you do have a disability, you can do like amazing things and you can still be pretty and you can still be proud of yourself. Um, so once I kind of flipped my thinking on like being ashamed of it and now I'm not ashamed of it, like a whole new world is kind of opened up for me. Like I wear shorts and I talk about it. And if people stare at me, like I smile instead of getting annoyed. So it's just, again, it's all about how you kind of look at your situation. And if you're positive about it, um, it can totally change your life. Like, I know that sounds cheesy, but me flipping it around is completely open a whole new world for me. And, and, you know, and I, I understand why people might think that sounds cheesy, but you're, you know, you're absolutely right. Uh, everything that we face and deal with in life really comes down to our attitude about it. And uh, so I think it's a very admirable quality that you have. Uh, you share a story. Sure. Um, you share a story on your website uh, about using a handicapped parking space for which you had the appropriate license plate to rightfully use. What was it about that situation that didn't sit right with you? I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've parked in handicap and um, I get comments from like elderly people or um, even people who aren't elderly and maybe they have like a mother or a, a relative or someone who is um, and I'm like physically handicapped and you can see like when I start walking that I have, well, I had a severe limp mm-hmm. Um but like people would give me dirty looks or like, Hey, you can't park there. Like literally walk up to me and say, Hey, you can't park there. And for me, I'm just like, well, how do you know that? Like don't judge somebody just because I'm younger and you think I'm like not the typical disabled person, what they would look like or whatever they're thinking. Like just because you can't physically see my leg brace or like how I walk I mean like I don't have a disability and I know there's a lot of people who don't have visible like disabilities maybe they have a heart condition or a lung condition or something to where they need to park in those spots um I just want people to know like don't always judge a book by its cover and I get that a lot and instead of I used to get mad when people would make comments to me when I would park there instead of getting mad about it and they wouldn't say stuff now, I'll just be like, Hey, this is why you shouldn't always judge a person because you never know like their full diagnosis. So for me, that's kind of like my way of like sharing, Hey, don't always like judge because you never really know. Absolutely. You went through a lot of surgeries before ultimately making a decision to undergo an amputation what were your thoughts prior to prior to doing this? Did you believe going in that having the amputation done would improve your quality of life? Yeah. Um, I've always had like this dead weight of a leg that was causing me pain and all kinds of infections. And I got to a point, like when I was in high school, I had my leg lengthened twice. And that was probably a good chunk of my surgeries because they would break the bone a couple of times. But regardless of that, I went through all that and it just never got to the point where I could do anything more with it. And I'd ask in high school, Hey, can I get this cut off? Let's just cut it off now. And maybe I can do more without it. And I always got the answer. No. Um, until recently. And I, I recently thought like you see on social media, all these people who are amputees and they're like running and doing all these amazing things without a leg. And here I am with this dead weight, getting infections and pain and like I could be what they're doing. So why not? My biggest thing was I could do this and worst case scenario, it doesn't work. And I end up in a wheelchair or on crutches for the rest of my life. Um, or I could miss out on like doing amazing things like they're doing. So for me, I'm like, this is doing me nothing but harm. So why not just get rid of it? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, as I follow your journey on Facebook and Instagram, I, I have to say, you, you know, you're a complete rock star and, and maybe you don't see that, but seriously, it's inspirational to see your positive attitude, uh, to see the pictures, you know, you're in the gym and you look, you look absolutely unstoppable. How's your recovery going? I mean, it's like, this is probably one of the easiest surgeries I've ever had. Oh, wow. Uh, 
I know that sounds silly, and but I guess because my mindset going into it was like, I'm going to rock this, and I'm going to be running and doing all these awesome things within the next year, that that end result for me is kind of like my motivation. Like, if you spend time thinking about how bad it is right now, you're not really looking at the end goal. You're obviously, your attitude's going to change, and it's not going to be positive, so... I always keep my mind towards the end goal of like, maybe I'm going to run a 5k next year. Maybe I'm going to do this. Maybe I'm going to do that. Um, chase after my daughter, like things like that get me excited. Um, so I kind of think about all that fun stuff and that's what keeps me going. And also the fact that I can't, I have so much nerve damage in this leg that I can't even feel it. Um, I literally have no pain. That's kind of my, my recovery isn't awful because I can't really feel it either. Okay. So you mentioned that you have a young daughter. How has she reacted to this tremendous change in your life? She just kind of is the same person as I am. She goes with the flow. Um, I kind of explained to her before, hey, mommy's going to get her leg cut off. And she sees me and how well I'm doing that it's like a non-event for her. And I think she sees how positive and happy I am. Um, So she's, just as happy for me and she's helpful and she does stuff for me. So like, she's awesome. And she's totally rocking this. Like it's no big deal to her. Awesome. Awesome. Love to love to hear that. So looking ahead, have your doctors given you any kind of time frame for when you'll be able to get a prosthesis? Yeah. So let's see. I'm about, I'm almost four weeks out for my amputation. So I got my students out last week and then tomorrow I get casted for my socket, which is like the top part of the prosthetic leg. Right. Right. Uh, very nice. Yeah. Which is super exciting and super quick um, because my leg is shrunk down so quickly and I was really atrophied and small in that leg to begin with. So um, that's why I'm doing so well and it's going so fast. So they're thinking, um, they're going to submit to insurance now. They did that last week. And it's really just a matter of time how the approvals go and everything goes through insurance and fighting that battle for them to pay for the leg. Um, once that's done, it's like as, as soon as it's here, it's kind of go time. So they told me within a month or two, but I really think they're, they're giving me like the longer end of the process. That way I don't get like too excited um, and then get disappointed if it takes a long time. So I'm thinking more, more like a month. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that they do that because sometimes I think when, especially when we're waiting on getting our sockets, we're like, yeah, a week. And they're like, yeah, more like a month. So yeah, I definitely understand uh, that anticipation that we get. Yeah. So tell me about your disabled beauty brand. When did you start that? And what does it mean to you? So that, I started that probably a year ago when I came up with the idea of like doing the lifted truck build for okay. disability awareness. Um, my thing was like, I went to Keg Media. He's um, a graphic designer in like the lifted truck industry. Okay. And I told him, hey, I want to build this like really badass big lifted truck. And of course it had to be pink, but um, I wanted to name it Disabled Beauty with the emphasis that the disc was crossed out because just because you have a disability doesn't mean you can't do amazing things and have the ability to do things. Right. So he came up with, I told him kind of what I wanted and he came up with that logo. And from there, I just kind of um, built everything out with the brand from there. I mean, it's my own personal thing, but um, I think it kind of gives other people, even people who aren't disabled, um, kind of inspiration that, hey, if she can do something with one and a half legs, then I can easily go to the gym. Or if she can drive that truck, I can drive that too. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's, a, that's a really great attitude to have. Absolutely. What are, what, are, what are some of the things that you've learned about yourself through all that you have dealt with and overcome in your life? Um. <laughs> I learned that I'm really, really stubborn. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> uh, that's 100% true. And I'm really, really impatient. Um, like, you have to have a lot of patience, especially waiting on a leg and 
um, healing time when it comes to surgeries and I'm like the most impatient person there is. Um, and that I don't give up. That's probably one of my biggest things. Um, and I cope kind of differently than a normal person would. Um, I kind of deal with it when I have to, I don't think about it too much because then you kind of get overwhelmed and look past like what's about to happen and get too afraid to do it. So I don't think about like right before my surgery, everybody's like, Oh, how are you doing? And um, are you nervous? And I'm like, no, cause I wasn't really thinking about it. But then right before I went into surgery, that's when I kind of got really, really nervous um, and had that kind of like, Oh gosh, here we go. Kind of moment. So right. yeah, so I'm stubborn and patient and I cope differently and yeah, I don't give up on things. Okay, good. So, you know, as you, I'm sure you've seen, there's a lot of people out there who are struggling with their own disability, whether it's being an amputee or some other form of disability. And we often encounter a lot of sad and depressed people, and they say that they just want their life back. What advice or encouragement do you have for them? Um, <laughs> my thing is, is, you do still have your life. It's just a different life. Um, and adapting to that new life and still finding things that make you happy and um, things that you can be awesome at, that's the stuff you should focus on. Don't think about your prior life. That's in the past. Think about how awesome you can do with what you have now. Absolutely. So what's next for you? What are you, what are you uh, looking forward to doing and trying once you get your prosthesis here in a little bit? Oh gosh. Um, I want to run. Um, I have all kinds of stuff I'm like potentially going to do. I've been talking about drag racing with, um, (laughs) with this guy. (laughs) There's so many crazy things. Um, next year I'm going to do, um, it's called Florida keys to recovery with project Athena. They're like, they're kind of a foundation who does, um, for people who have overcome like huge physical obstacles kind of like an amputation um so i'll do 120 miles in the florida keys um kayak bike and hike so that'll be november 2018 okay wow um i want to do a tough mudder eventually that's obviously not going to happen anytime soon um i don't know i just have all these ideas like you just think about like running and jumping and doing all these crazy things and like I'd never be able to do anything like this before. So I'm really, really excited. You know, that's awesome. And you know, your, your enthusiasm and your positivity is absolutely courageous and, uh, and definitely contagious as well. Uh, so definitely admire that. Thank you. Sure. So I've been talking with Christy Wimberly. For more information about Christy, visit her website, www disabledbeauty.com and let me spell that out because it's a little different d-i-s-x-a-b-l-e-d-b-e-a-u-t-y.com you can connect with her on instagram at disabled beauty spelled the same way and on facebook at christy k123 christy thanks so much for joining me on amp life it's been an absolute pleasure thank you so much this was awesome absolutely You've been listening to Revamped, the number one amputee podcast hosted by an amputee and brought to you by De La Torre Orthotics and Prosthetics in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. If you've enjoyed today's episode, leave us a review on iTunes or give us a like on Facebook. I'm Brian Mosier. I invite you to visit our website, www.revampedpodcast.com and connect with us on Facebook at Revamped Podcast.